Welcome to SysEng Quick. My name is John, and today I'll teach you how to use Ansible filters, tests, and templates, the Jinja trifecta. Ansible filters allow us to format and transform our data in useful ways. Tests give us the ability to take control of our playbooks with powerful conditionals. And templates let us easily format text blocks, which can be extremely useful when deploying config files. Let's get started. In VS Code, I made a new folder called Files in our Playbooks folder. I placed this Jinja.json file inside here. It has some sample data I took from the Ansible website. Let's make a new playbook called Jinja.yaml. We'll go ahead and make our first play inside here. Test Jinja in Ansible. We're going to run this against the local host. And I need to not gather facts, so we'll set that to false. In our task, we're going to load JSON data from file. I want to store this in a variable. And we can do that with the set fact module. A fact is a very high precedence variable associated with a host. So we can say, I want the fact to be called JSON data. And to get the data, we're going to use the lookup plugin, just like we did when we got the SH key for our unprivileged user. So we'll do Ansible built-in file, and we'll give it the path of the file, which is files jinja.json. Now, this will load our JSON data, but it won't give us a dictionary like we would expect. To do that, we can use our first Jinja filter. This is from JSON. This filter will take this JSON data and convert it into an Ansible dictionary that we can work with in Ansible. The first thing I want to do is simply print out the data. So we'll display JSON data. We can use the debug module to do that. We'll give it the variable property, and our variable is JSON data. Let's go ahead and save that, and let's see how it looks on the command line. Let's go run Ansible Playbook Sysenge Quick Tutorial Jinja, and we'll see how that works. And yeah, it loaded our data in here, and then it printed out everything that's in that JSON file. Our sample data under the domain key has a server key, which is a list of server objects. I'd like to get a list of each of the names of these server objects. Let's see how we can do that with Ansible. We'll go back to our playbook and we'll make a new task, display server names. We'll use the debug module again and we'll give it the variable server names which we can define in our vars clause right down here in the tasks. So for server names, we need to give it a Jinja filter because I need to print this data. So I want to get JSON data and I want to get the domain property and then the server property. This is our list of server objects. Now to get the name out of each of these server objects, we can pass it to the map filter giving it a property of attribute equals the attribute name we want, which in this case is name. Now this gives an iterable, and we need to convert that to a list for use with Ansible. To do that, we can use the list filter. Let's go ahead and save that, and let's see how the playbook runs now. We'll run it again, and you can see we do have a list of server names. You might wonder what would happen if we didn't have a name property in one of our objects. Let's find out. Let's go remove the name of this server, and then we'll rerun the playbook. Not exactly what I was hoping for. It would have been nice to have an array of three elements, but instead we get an error condition. It doesn't do things well when the attribute looking for isn't defined. Let's see what we can do about that. Let's go back to our playbook. And first, I'd like to convert this to a multi-line string because this condition is getting very long. So let's go ahead and get rid of this and this here. And we'll go ahead and indent some things. And then we'll put these on their own line as well. 
This will make it a little bit easier to read our long condition. So we can apply another property in our map filter. We can give it a default value. Let's say the default is missing. Let's go ahead and run that. And now it works and we have a missing value. But that may be a little bit awkward. What if we had a server that was named missing? How can we tell the difference? Well, we probably couldn't. So let's think of something better for this. Let's go back to our playbook and let's change the default value to false. And now we can apply another filter before we get to our list filter. We're going to use the select filter here. This filter allows us to apply a test to every object that it's passed. And if the test is true, it keeps the object in the output. Otherwise, it removes it. So string objects by default are true. And obviously, false values are false. So when we see a false, it's going to remove it from the output before we get to our list filter. Let's go ahead and save that and run it one more time. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. Three servers in the output. When you find yourself mashing together a bunch of Jinja filters, it might be easier to reach for a powerful JSON parser instead. There's one available in the Community General Collection. Let's go ahead and install that. We'll do Ansible Galaxy Collection Install Community.General. To use this filter, we also need to add the Jamus Path Python library. So we'll do Poetry Add Jamus Path. Or maybe it's James Path. I'm not really sure. Now that we have those, we can use the JSON query filter from community.general. Now that we've added our dependencies, let's go make a new task. Display server names with JSON query. We're going to do the debug module again, and our var is again going to be server name. We'll give the var clause, and our server names is going to be JSON data, and we're going to pipe that right into our filter, community general dot JSON query. Now the Jamus path language is very rich and full featured, so we don't have time to go over everything here, but I want to get the top level domain key and then the server key under that, which is an array. So I want everything in that array. And then I want only things from that array with the name property. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and run the playbook and see if we get the same results. And yes, we do. And you can see it automatically works with the missing value. We didn't have to do anything in there. Let's see how Ansible can help us with configuring a file using a Jinja template. Let's configure our get config file. So to do that, we're going to import a role and we'll create a new role called get config. So let's go ahead and import that. We'll go back to our file explorer and we'll make a new role get config. We'll have a main.yaml task file. The task we want to run here is write get config. To write a template, we're going to use the template module. The source is our Jinja template, which I'm going to call get config.j2. All Jinja files end in a J2 extension. The destination is going to be inside our home directory in the dot get config file. To find location of our home directory, I'm going to use a lookup plugin. It's going to be the environment lookup plugin. So we're going to do lookup ansible built in env, and I want the home environment variable. Then we'll tack on slash dot get config. Next, we'll add a mode property of 0644. And now we're ready to make our template. Let's go to our file explorer. We'll make a new folder under our roles for our templates. And it's going to be get config.j2. Let's go ahead and make our template now. If VS Code detects this as anything other than raw Jinja, you should go ahead and change that. Otherwise, it might do some kind of formatting we don't want. So this is a git config file. So I'm going to have a user section. I want to say the name is going to be the git config name. 
and then my email is going to be the git config email. You can see that in a Jinja template, we can use these Jinja expressions just like we've been doing in Ansible. We don't have to quote them here because this is a raw Jinja file, not a YAML file, which can't have raw curly braces. Let's go ahead and supply some of these values. We'll go back to our playbook and we'll add some bars right in here. I'll say it's git config name and I'll give it my name. And then I'll do git config email and I'll give it my email address. Okay, let's see if that works. We'll go ahead and run the playbook and we'll see what happens. Yes, it wrote our git config. And yes, our variables were templated properly. To use VS Code with Git, we can add these sections here. But that may not be what everyone wants. So let's make these sections conditional on a variable. We can do that by opening up a new Jinja expression with open curly brace percent and closing it with percent curly brace. Inside here, we'll add an if expression. So I want to say if get config use VS code, then we'll write this section. When we're done, we do open curly brace, a percent, and do end if. Note that the opening and closing tag needs to be on the same line. Let's go ahead and save that. And let's see what happens when we run it on the command line. If we go ahead and run the playbook, uh, there's an undefined variable. We need to make sure this variable is defined. Let's go ahead and make that a default in our template. We'll go ahead and go to our role. We'll make a new file, defaults main.yaml, and we'll say git config use VS code, and we'll set it to false by default. Let's try that one more time. There we go. And now it is the same as we had before. But if we were to enable that and say git config use VS code is true, now we should see that section being added to our git config. And indeed it is. So now we can toggle that on or off at our discretion. Let's add a section for git aliases to our git config. I want the user to supply a list of aliases they want added to their config file. We'll need to iterate over that list. And we can do that with a Jinja for expression. So we'll do open curly brace percent sign for alias in git config underscore aliases. And then each alias is going to be an object with a name and a value property. So we'll do a Jinja print expression and we'll say alias name and then we'll say equals another Jinja print expression alias and this one is going to be value and that should be good for our alias. All we have to do now is close out the for section with an end for Jinja tag. That looks pretty good, but if we don't define this, it's going to crash. So let's make sure we have a default value. We'll say git config aliases. It's going to be an empty array. Let's see if that works. We'll go ahead and run our playbook. It changed our git config file, and we do have an empty aliases section. Let's add an alias in our vars over here. So we'll do git config aliases, and I'm going to add a single alias. The name is going to be one line, and the value is going to be log dash dash one line. I'll go ahead and save that. Let's run the playbook again. It changed the file. And yes, I do have my alias. And yes, it does seem to work. Maybe we shouldn't always be running the git config task. Maybe it should only happen on certain conditions. Let's add a when clause. We'll make it multi-line. And I only want to run this if I'm the VS Code user. So let's look up the environment variable called user. We'll do lookup ansible built-in.env for the user. And I'll say if it's equal to VS Code, we should be okay to run this task. Let's go ahead and try that out. 
And yep, it still runs it. If I typo VS Code, does it still work? It does, and it skips the task. That's the behavior that I want. But maybe there is more than one user I want to check against. We could add an OR condition. However, we could also use an Ansible test. Let's see how that might work. Let's replace our double equals with is in, and we'll give it an array. And I'll say I want to allow either the Ansible user or the VS Code user to trigger running this role. Let's go ahead and run this playbook. Yep, we are the VS Code user, so this test still returns true. And I can prove that it wouldn't if we typo this file. It does skip over this now. That looks pretty good. There is another option other than the in test. We could have used the regex test instead. Let's see how that would work. Let's remove that line and replace it with Ansible built-in regex and it will give it our regular expression. So I want to give it a group and I want to say it's either starting at the beginning of the string, it is going to be Ansible or it's going to be VS Code and then we'll have the end of the string. That should be pretty good. Let's go ahead and try that out. This should run the task and it does. Again, if I typo VS Code, it skips the task. So yeah, there's the regex test. There are a lot of other tests, but we'll get to those in a future video. There's a lot more to do with Ansible test filters and templates, but I think this is a good overview of how they work. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons. It helps out the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.